Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Spook House Podcast. My name is Phil and I believe you all know my co-host, my friend, handsome Italian son of a bitch, Doug. <laughs> Still haven't given Phil my grandma's sauce recipe, Galliardo. What is up? <laughs> you know what? You can blame my dad for that because, well, honestly, you can blame both of us for that because our short term memory is straight up garbage. And is it a family thing? Yeah, honestly, probably. Oh, okay. I think it might has to have to do with uh, our own selfish needs, possibly. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just asking for a sauce recipe. <laughs> so that every time I go over there, we talk about other things, and then I remind him, and he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll write it down. And then 20 minutes later, when I'm about to leave, we both forget. All right. Well, I'll give you his number if you want to text him. I'm sure he'd love to hear from you. <laughs> I would love to text with your dad, send gifts back and forth. and It's a lot of one word answers. Yeah. He well, just text me, feed dogs this morning. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'll walk over there. Well, I'll get it at some point. That's okay. Um, but today we are going to do part two of overrated, underrated. We had so much fun on the last episode doing this that we reached out to um, all the good listeners out there, said, hey, what are your overrated, underrated picks? We got a lot of good answers, so we're going to read them all. And Doug also has his list that we didn't get to last time. I came home from work 30 minutes ago and looked for my list from last time and could not find it. But Well, I, I actually extended my list because there's... Some some on this list that honestly, I don't know if they fit the bill, uh, but I extended it a little more, so I added like twenty more movies. Yeah, we'll have more than plenty to talk about. We might even do a part three. Who knows? There's plenty of movies out there. We could just keep this series rolling along. Yeah. So, Doug, um, you know what? Before we get into it, if you are watching on YouTube, do us a huge favor, like comment your most overrated underrated movies and subscribe to the channel because starting to add a lot more stuff up there but if you're just tuning in thank you that's 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 all we ask yes phil finally got a mac computer one that actually runs and functions so he downloaded cap cut starting to do a little more editing doing a little christopher nolan a lot more abilities in the booth <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah Follow the Instagram, follow the TikTok, the Spook House podcast. Wow, look at that fucking plug. Hey, plug away. You got to. <laughs> no, we, you work hard over here. Let's, you know, a, a little bit of a like and a comment. It's not asking too much, but it's all good. Do you remember uh, that Glade commercial from the 90s that went like, plug it in, plug it in? Of course. Plug it out. Okay, just making sure we're on the same page. I don't think it was plug it out. Oh, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think me and my friends embellish on the song a little bit so i kind of remember it uh i remember the parody version that we made up all right shout out to glade sponsor the show <laughs> i actually use airwick all the fresh horror picks you can handle hey pun intended baby hey let's kick off this overrated underrated list let's hit it baby do you want to go first because you put up a questionnaire on your page you got a lot of responses I got a decent I put up amount. one on the Spook House Instagram. I got a lot of responses. So, yeah, yeah. we could mix and match. Uh, I'll go first if you okay. uh, want me to. Sure. Uh, and the first one is quite the doozy. Um, coming in straight from, I will not disclose the location. Um, and I will, I will refrain from using real names because I know people don't want to, uh, you know, put their real names out there. Uh, so, this is from a dear friend, uh, Hellmouth. That's what she goes by. She's. All right pretty dope person uh but she said mandy is overrated um Ooh. yeah i think think a little overrated uh i i'm gonna what are your off, thoughts i'm gonna pull an office space of bill lumberg and go uh yeah i'm gonna have to <laughs> go ahead and disagree with you there Ooh. yeah um I, I would say I would say that movie is properly rated, actually. Uh, I think a lot of people could get confused by it because of 
I don't know. It's not. It's like a typical revenge story, but the way it's you know uh, displayed on the screen, it's kind of like a slow burn type. It's very weird. The atmosphere is vibrant and dark at the same time. It's kind of set in this world that's not of Earth. So it's kind of it kind of reminds me of this other universe. So it's a little sci-fi heavy too. Um, I could see how like the slowness of like the characters could get under someone's skin, but. I think enough. I think a lot of people really like it or love it. I don't really see people hating it, but from my point of view, I mean, it's the resurgence of Nicolas Cage. Yeah, I don't know that movie. The movie kicks ass. I love Mandy. I love the psychedelic, batshit, crazy style of it. But yeah, it just it has a lot of blood, a lot of violence. It's very unique. Nicolas Cage gives one of his most Nicolas Cagey performances. I mean. Can't beat that. And also, oh, I forgot the name of the of the actress, but she was in Possessor. She was in this Oscar nominated movie a couple years ago, oh, but she's so good. All right. So I think we're going to stick with proper. It's proper Go right rate. down the middle. All right. You want me to do one? This yeah, is baby. One. All right. We go. We going back and forth on the seesaw. OK. Our boys a toxic coffin. Hey, what's up, daddies? Lance and Steven, I don't know which one wrote this question in, but I wholeheartedly agree. Overrated, The Conjuring slash Malignant. So we get <laughs> throughout two. I call bullshit on that already. You can't combine those two movies. <laughs> um, They're not in the same universe. We didn't state the rules, but <laughs> I'm going to allow it. Just what? because, we <laughs> well, you know, yeah. Yeah, you still need to rewatch that movie. So we can talk about The Conjuring. Um, I don't think it's overrated. I think that movie is very properly rated. I wouldn't say underrated by far. Properly no. rated because it is one of those movies came out in modern times, 2013, that reinvented the possession genre and made it scary again. That movie still terrifies me to this day. Fuck you. I see your eyebrows raising. I didn't, I didn't say anything. <laughs> you, you gave me the people's eyebrow. We all saw it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you say so, Douglas. But you're not a big fan of like possession movies in general. No, I would say, yeah, possession slash ghost haunting kind of movies. Uh, they've just been done to death at this point and I get a little bored with them. I mean, the conjuring of course does have some good jump scares. I mean, James Wan is uh, the master of crafting a jump scare, but something about his movies just, I don't know. It's all popcorn, no substance. I feel like that movie is one of his best though. Yeah. Look, it's, it's not a bad movie, but I do think it's overrated overrated damn yeah, yeah Do you think, I think people hype that movie up that much kind of yeah it's always like on the top s- scariest movies of the last whatever years i agree with that because if you think about it i mean all the move all the let's just go with mainstream movies here like the blockbuster horror movies like uh terrifier barbarian sinister hereditary all those movies i think the conjuring is up there it's way more, uh, you know, in depth and scarier than sinister in my eyes. Uh, but I guess it's all subjective, obviously. Sure. Um, but I, I think the conjuring just brings like a certain level of like anti absurdity. Like it feels so grounded and real that I feel like it still holds up. And to think that it came out like 11 years ago, is pretty wild. Um, I think it holds up just the same as it did. When it came out in 2013, I think it could be a timeless classic that people go back to. All right. That's a, that's a fair point, but I'm going to lean overrated. I think you're going to go proper. So I'm going to go we'll, properly rated. We'll kind of meet somewhere in the middle. Just um, like James Wan, baby. So very hey. fitting, very fitting to be middle of the road. James Wan, middle <laughs> lane. Just, you know, he's, he's pretty good. It's never holy shit amazing. But hey, speaking of James Wan, we got Malignant here. 
Do we even need to talk about this? I we I contemplated about- so hard to not put Halloween 2018 on here. I didn't think we were going to go there. We well, took it out. Look, we don't have to talk about Malignant a whole lot. No, that's one of those movies we have talked about it to death on this podcast. I fucking hate it. Doug loved it. But to be yeah. fair, you've only watched it once, and the last time you watched it was like three years ago. Yes, you need I watched a good it. refresher. I do. Yeah, you're right. I, I watched it. Follows. I gave it an honest watch. Again, seen that movie like three times already, <laughs> and my 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 feelings did not change. Uh, you know, predominantly, but you know, you could end up warming up to malignant just a little more. You got a fair point. I've only seen it once. I thought it was horrendously awful the first time I saw it. Um, it is not a Giallo movie. I think Aquaman is more of a Giallo <laughs> movie than Malignant is. But hey, whatever. You really see that bright red blood underwater. <sighs> yeah. The Malignant to me is more in the same line as like Saw. It feels like a Saw movie just without the traps. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, and their underrated pick. I've never heard of either of these, but they are now on my to watch list. Intruder. Ooh. You yeah. ever seen that? Uh yeah, I've seen I've seen Intruder. Uh it's a Sam Raimi movie. Oh. Um very, very low key under the radar. Uh, but it's a fun one. I would s- I wouldn't say underrated be- I've seen it mm, two or three times. Um it's a fun little slasher movie that I feel like is a good background movie. You don't really need to pay attention. The kills are fun because it takes place in a supermarket. So there's plenty of hijinks that could happen there. Oh, is that the one with Bruce Campbell? Yes. For like a second where he plays like a cop. Yeah. I remember seeing like the trailer for it or something. And I heard a lot of people say it sucked, but I, I I don't know. I've never seen it. Yeah. It's, it's pretty okay. I wouldn't say it's like underrated, Mm. Only only for the fact that not I well, aside from people in like the horror community, uh I can't imagine a lot of people know about Intruder. Uh, but it is a fun, schlocky, like B horror movie, even C to D horror movie that you could just throw on and have a good time with. I would say it's by that by that standard I'd say underrated, but I'm leaning more towards like properly rated. Okay, and they also had Lair of the White Worm. Have you ever heard of this? Yes. I stars f- Hugh Grant. Yep. Yes, it does. Um, and I absolutely hate Hugh Grant. Uh, he annoys me every time I used to walk into Blockbuster and I saw the D- the uh, cover for Notting Hill and his smug face on it. Nah, wasn't a fan. Wanted to piss on it immediately. Um, but I did find <laughs> Layer of the White Worm at this thrift shop, and I got through about 15 minutes of it and was bored as shit. Really? Uh, so I turned it off. And I didn't even finish it. I'm pretty sure it's on Prime, or is, I almost started to watch it last night when I got this answer. But um, yeah, I'm curious to know what you think of it if you actually finish it. For, I usually finish movies. I was just like, so maybe it was the mood I was in, but I was just like, I don't, I don't want to watch this. Okay, we've all been there. <laughs> it does happen from time to time. Yeah. All right, Doug, what do you got? All right. Um, so this is going to be a good one because we both recently watched this movie uh, again. Uh, I guess you could consider it an, uh, an older modern classic um, from Spooky Nick. That's the home girl. Uh, Nikki's in the name, so I'll say her name. Uh, she's also rad. Uh, Jennifer's body. Yeah, I love that movie. It's great. I only saw it like once when it first came out and a couple of months ago, I was like, you know what? I remember nothing about this. Let me go back to it. And I had so much fun watching it. It's fucking great. So she proposes the question. If Megan Fox wasn't in the movie, would it, would people feel the same way about it? Given that it came out in 2008, I think it would have helped the reception of it if she wasn't in it. Because at the time, it was like, 
oh, it's, uh, you know, Megan Fox is so hot. This is going to suck. It's just going to be a shallow fucking vapid movie. So a lot of people were immediately turned off to it and wrote it off before they even watched it. Which is what most people do nowadays still. Yeah, unfortunately. But I think she's great in the movie. It's definitely aged really well. I mean, as far as a horror comedy, it blends it so well. I had a lot of fun watching it. Yeah, and I just watched it for the first time, uh, I think about a month ago, maybe two months ago. And a lot of people have been saying that that Lisa Frankenstein movie reminds them of Heather's. I think Jennifer's body is more in the same vein and atmosphere as Heather's. It's witty. Well, it's, it's the funny. same writer. Same writer, yes. Um, I don't know. Lisa Frankenstein just didn't do it for me. But Jennifer's body, I I wouldn't say over i wouldn't say overrated no i don't think and i and the same i kind of like how you know i wouldn't call megan fox i wouldn't call that role like stunt casting but it is like a good marketing tool to get people to see the movie uh like just how paris hilton was in house of wax and the whole marketing campaign was like see paris die like people want to see that yeah. uh at that time <clears throat> and yeah i don't again is the acting necessarily great? No, but oh, it's just a solid. super fun movie. It's okay. It's nothing crazy. Adam I love Brody is great. Oh yeah. He plays a good douchebag. Yeah. Uh, the whole band angle, like sacrificing themselves uh, or sacrificing other people to, uh, you know, Satan, pretty cool angle. Uh, oh, the atmosphere is really good. <laughs> <laughs> and like the, the movie is, it balances comedy and horror very well like that's like yeah. in the same vein as i keep saying that phrase but like fright night like yeah. it's the perfect balance of horror it's like everything you could want in a movie it's a good comparison actually just right off the yeah. dome baby um but yeah i'll say underrated for jennifer's body rated yeah i'll go underrated well, that's a tough one i feel like it's getting its due now but for a long time it was underrated again. Like people didn't really appreciate it when it came out, like you said, and then people became attached to it. Thank you for the question, Nikki. I will give you underrated on that though. All right. This argument. next one is from our friend, Melanie. What's up, daddy. Okay. Her overrated pick is the night house movie sucked. <laughs> <laughs> now you told me that this movie was pretty solid. I've never seen it. Okay, very solid up until the third act. Then it like just falls apart. For me, it did. I know a lot of people say it's like it was their favorite movie of the year, and I can see why, but it just kind of lost me towards the end. I will say that there is a jump scare in that movie that it shook me to my fucking core when I saw it. Well, you haven't seen it, right? No, that's the only thing that I remember you telling me about it was that this jump scare like really freaked you out and I haven't watched it yet. It just comes out of nowhere and I was watching it in theaters. I was like, oh, that, the <laughs> oh that was early 2020. Yeah. Yeah. I like came out of my fucking seat when it happened. <laughs> All right. Now I feel like I need to watch it even more now. Well, I don't know. I guess there's a case that it's overrated, but. I don't, I don't think enough people talk about it for it to be overrated. Yeah. I'll go proper. But thank you for the question, Melanie. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, this next one, uh, it's another one I haven't seen. Um, I think you might have seen it, but you definitely recommended to me the original. And I, again, recently watched that movie, I think, last year. And it is uh, coming from Art Mom. What's Gucci, Daddy? Uh, it's Pet Cemetery Two. Pet Cemetery Two, definitely underrated. Uh, I would how, say. Wait, you haven't seen Pet Cemetery Two? Uh, no, I just saw the first Pet Cemetery like last year. That's right. Yeah. Wow, Which I that's, enjoyed very much. I don't know how that one slipped you by. I've. I feel like that one was on TV all the time when I was a kid. I've probably seen that like twenty times at this point. You know what? Because I steer clear of any animal type of 
horror because like it upsets me uh to watch like animals in peril so i tend to stay away from like cujo i don't care to watch that movie ever uh i've seen like clips of it but i don't give a shit because i i like dogs too much and i don't want to see the dog get put down or whatever uh so All i right. tend to stay away from the <laughs> the animal driven horror movies <laughs> but uh i did i really enjoyed the first one uh how different is the second one compared to the first one does anyone come back it's very different i mean edward furlong is kind of the star of it oh but clancy brown is in it as oh a, as a villain and he is just unhinged in that movie <laughs> it's uh, a very young dastardly clancy brown but yes i will go underrated totally agree with you art mom uh i'm sure it's on tubi somewhere or amazon prime or something like that i don't have no i don't have either one on tape so that needs to go into my collection too all right this next one comes from the evil red attack the gas station for underrated now i looked this up and it's like a korean uh sort of action heist movie yeah he's uh, told me about this movie a bunch of times and it's on youtube actually uh because he said it's v pretty hard to find uh and he prefaces that with i mean he he recommended me this movie a couple weeks ago and i just haven't gotten around to watching it but he says it's really awful but like he loves it hmm uh so i guess in this case it is underrated because i don't think a lot of people know about it uh but i would love to watch some trash what do you got next doug all right we got one coming in from our homie vanessa part of the uh, Universal Studio crew when we were out in California. Uh, Hell House LLC in the underrated category. Underrated? Huh. I don't know. I'll go proper. It seems proper to get a, that? Yeah, it seems to get a lot of love. I've watched it a couple times. I like it. Yeah, so I've only seen it once, and I, I did enjoy it. I don't think it was... I think when people told me about it, it seemed a little overhyped. But I get it. It was a fun. It was a fun movie. Yeah, it's one of the better recent found footage movies. Yeah, um, and the ha it's a whole franchise too, which is pretty cool. Uh, I haven't gotten into the other movies. I keep hearing that they're not as great as the original, and then the recent one that came out brings it back to the first and is pretty interesting. But I, I I'm not a huge fan of the found footage movies, but when it's done right. Uh, yeah. Fuck you. We talked about player much <laughs> last time. <laughs> oh no, I thought you were laughing about huge. <laughs> oh, I, 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 dude, I don't even recognize that I say it. <laughs> huge. Uh, sorry, <laughs> but yeah, we could talk about Blair Witch. No, we did that already on the first one. Yeah, you're right. And I rewatched it the other night. Five fucking stars. I love it. Whatever. It is Stevie Wonder would okay. would just like that movie. Whatever. <laughs> I said what I said. Listen, and, and I will also give that one a proper rewatch. I haven't seen it in like 20 years. I would say it's time to do so. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't care about that movie. You don't even know. You've basically never seen it. <laughs> When's the last time you watched it? When you were 12? Uh, no, later than that. But yeah, but closer to, to 12 than like 30. <laughs> well, there you go. All right, I, I will invest. I think it time. holds up. I, I really do. So, I wish they went to the witch more, like that whole witch aspect. You can't say anything because you haven't seen it in <laughs> twenty years. Give it a rewatch, and we will talk about. I'm it. I'm going off of what my fourteen year old brain remembers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, what movie were we talking about before this? Oh, Hell House. Yes. Yeah, Hell House. I'll uh, go proper rated. I would. I would say properly rated leaning towards overrated because people really do hype this movie up it's not yeah. mind-blowing it's just fun it's a fun movie well vanessa also sent in one on the spook house instagram for overrated she said drag me to hell i could only, see that i only saw it once right when it came out and for some reason i was not that crazy about it 
understandably so, uh, because it is Sam Raimi directed. It does not feel like a Sam Raimi movie. Maybe the practical, I mean, not, I wouldn't say practical effects because there's honestly not a lot of practical effects in the movie, but like the certain gags that he does, uh, it's very Sam Raimi ish, but it just feels like Sam Raimi with CGI. Um, I watched this movie when it first came out too. Didn't like it at all. Rewatched it during the pandemic and was like, okay, I'm into this movie. Uh, I had a lot of fun with it. Just taking my mind out of it. Like it's just a stupid movie. I wasn't a huge fan. It's basically thinner meets evil dead. You're just saying that because of the gypsy woman, but you're right. (laughs) Yeah. It's a fair comparison. I think. Also, that's the one thing that they nailed in the movie. Again, like we talked about with Pumpkinhead. They just casted a very wrinkly, old, gross-looking woman without any uh, any effects necessary. She was just old and ratty-looking. And that's all you need. And you were also in the movie, right? I wish I was in that movie. Oh, oh wait, you're right. That's Justin Long. Yeah, I was, I was, his, uh, I was his stunt double. Nice. Yeah, Barbarian, Zach and Miri make a porno. I mean, (laughs) me and him are just that tight. (laughs) All right, Doug, what is your next pick? Uh, All right, next pick is coming from Movie Miyagi. What up, homeboy? Uh, Dead and Breakfast is his pick, and he said, uh, da-da-da, underrated. Another movie that I haven't heard of, but I'm excited to watch it because the sound of that Sounds like a lot of fun to me. I was going to say, it's one of those movies I know the cover. I've heard about it for years, but I've never watched it. So, right there with you. I guess underrated. (laughs) I would say underrated because we haven't seen it. (laughs) Well, he knows more than us, so we'll say underrated. But it sounds like a very 80s schlocky type of movie that's a lot of fun. So, I definitely need to check it out. Great title. All right, this next one comes from John Hammer 82, all the way from Ireland. Recently bought a yeah. shirt and a sweatshirt. Hope hey. it gets to you in like three weeks or however long it's going to take to get to you. But hopefully it stays intact. Yeah, but he's no rats either or anything. This, this might be kind of a, a hot debate here. He said this is what mid, I live for. midsummer overrated. I, I kind of. I see what you're saying, John. I agree. I'm picking up what you're putting down. And I am falling off that cliff with him as well. I totally agree that it is as much as I love Florence Pugh as a movie. It is overrated. Oh, that's Uh, right. It does have your baby girl in it. That's right. And she kills it. She's the best part about that movie. I don't, I think if Florence Pugh didn't deliver that heartbreaking, sad performance that we all know her for now, uh, the movie wouldn't be as good. Grumpy face. Exactly. You could just relate to her so well. You feel bad <laughs> for her. She's adorable. And then she <laughs> lights her boyfriend on fire, who treats her like shit the entire time. Those aspects are great. But I feel like the movie is a little too self-indulgent. <sighs> Took the words uh, right out of my mouth. Yes. Just needs to be a little on the runtime, just a little shorter, you know, or go. I wish they would have went more into the cult aspect of it rather than just keeping it in the background pretty much. And I know the whole catch is yeah, but the movie's in daylight. So it's creepier. I don't think so. I mean, Ari Aster's movie, you always walk out with fucking 20 question marks above your head. Uh, this is one of them. Um, but yeah, it's, Oh, it's an okay middling type of movie with, with a really rock solid performance. I'd agree with that. And also found the the intro of the movie, you know, where she like finds her parents and they duct tape these tubes to their face, yeah. like fighter pilots, and it's <laughs> running all the way down the stairs. Into oh, they're the about garage. to ride some fucking sandworms. That's it's, what they're doing. It's like the most elaborate form of, you know, offing yourself I've ever seen. It was like the mouse traps of all suicides. It was basically Ari Aster sitting beside me going, aren't you <laughs> shocked right now? This is so shocking. Look at what I did. It's unique. No one has done this before. Yeah. The Dune soundtrack kicks in. Ah! 
I haven't seen it since the theaters. I can't bring myself to rewatch it. That's how little it grabbed me. I watched it. Tw- I saw it once in theaters and once when it came on uh, Amazon. Yeah, I still have the same feeling about it. It's just okay. Now, if it's on, I won't shut it off. Um, but again, another good background movie. There's a lot of unnecessary stuff in there. I feel like that could have been cut just to make it a little more have more of a pulse, you know? <clears throat> yeah. Well, we look forward to Ari Aster's next film, which apparently deals with COVID and all that, because that's the subject matter we all want to hear about. <laughs> but we want to hear Joaquin Phoenix's perspective on it. Yeah, I read the plot synopsis of that. Hey, I don't know. Maybe it'll be good, but... Ari Aster and a Western, that combination is like too interesting to not see. I mean, I'll see it. He's one of those directors. I'm always curious to see what he puts out next, but he is on a steep decline. I think he's um, I think he's one for two with you. He's one, one for, for three. three. Sorry. Yeah. All right, Doug. What's your next pick? All right. We got this one coming in from the Anthony Lake. What's up, dog? Uh, Night of the Demons, uh, an 80s classic. And we got underrated from him. Underrated Night of the Demons. And I guess we have to think about it in the context of like outside of the horror space, too. That's what I was just thinking. (laughs) Because we all know it. We all love it. Exactly. But as far as like your everyday horror fan or just movie fan. Yeah, I think there's a case it's underrated. I would absolutely say underrated. It's like one of those movies that. Again, in the mainstream, it flies under the radar, but if it came out, just for example, if it came out today, it would be such a fun movie. There's great set pieces. Yeah. Um, it's a haunted house story, which I feel like has not been, you know, not really touched upon recently a lot. Uh, it's just like a fun haunted house movie, it's fun characters, um, classic 80s teenagers. Uh, I don't know if they should remake this movie ever, but I could see it being done. Oh, they did. Oh yeah. In 2009. Fuck with, uh, Edward Furlong and, and Shannon Elizabeth and homegirl from Freddy versus Jason. Yes. That's uh, true. that was fucking horrible. Yeah. I completely didn't register that. That was a movie. Yep. Uh, it's like all the, that's right. Yes. She was great. in Freddy versus Jason. That's it. Um, but yeah, Night of the Demons has all the right ingredients for a great slasher movie. Yeah, I think underrated is a fair title for that. Yeah, I, I still haven't seen the second one. Uh, I haven't seen it either. Hmm. There's a third one as well. I hear the third one's pretty awful, but the second one's good. Ah, we'll have to both look into that. But yeah, Night of the Demons, uh, again, gets talked about a lot within our circles. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I feel like this movie deserves to be spoken about a lot more as like a really solid gem from the eighties. Here, here Douglas. All right. You're going to love this next one. This comes from our boy, Zachary. He says, overrated. The Blair witch slash the witch underrated. The ruins, the descent, and Mm. haunt haven't seen the ruins the descent i think we talked about last time right yeah we got through the descent last time that was a big uh that was a big debate i believe i think we both agreed on that one haunt Uh, there's a case it's underrated i only saw it once it was fun it's a nice halloween watch uh i saw it once and hated it uh Mm. then i rewatched it and didn't fully turn the corner on it I would tend to say overrated people really hype up haunt and it's just very listen. The masks are cool and the whole idea is cool, but it just gets very like soap opera out of Mm. nowhere. Like it's the characters are kind of unlikable to me. Uh, So I couldn't really grasp onto that fact and didn't really care about like the human side of the story. I just wanted to see them all get slaughtered. Okay. And the ruins came out in like 2008 
when I was working in the movie theater, and that shit was hot garbage. So I'm sorry, Zachary. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And for his overrated picks, The Blair Witch, wrong. The right. Witch, so wrong. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've only seen The Witch once. I know you have a Black Phillip tattoo and everything. I do. Um, I think The Witch is just an absolute 10 out of 10 masterpiece. I just think it's perfect. I like the the tone of the movie. I love how just slow it is. I mean, I don't even think it's wouldn't even call it slow. It just moves at a natural pace. Right. Like in real time, like it's not like cutting so much from here to there. Yeah, which which I appreciate. And that's also one of the reasons why I love it follows. It's just everything unfolds naturally. Nothing's overdone. Yeah, but is it entertaining? I think so. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I feel like those movies capture a realism that most movies miss, like people just having natural conversations. And but, anyways, I don't want to talk about it follows anymore. No, but but I, I do want to piggyback on your uh, what you were saying with the natural conversation thing. Uh huh. Going back to haunt. It feels like, you know, humans interacting for the first time. Like it's just all weird monologues and then the 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 dramatic music comes in. It just feels like a soap opera. But like movies like It Follows, again, I don't fully hate that movie. I appreciate it just sounds like people hanging out and yeah. just like be it, you know, it allows you to be part of the group. Yeah. Uh, and so isn't that what life mostly is? Just mundane moments that aren't these extravagant interactions. I feel like movies yeah. miss that a lot. But you do have to make it entertaining, uh, it, but it's all how you write the dialogue. You know, anything can be entertaining as long as it's, you know, uh, wouldn't even say informative, just like, you know, has a little bit of humor. It's deep or just something that you connect with. That's, that's real and grounded. Like you said, doesn't need mm -hmm. to be you just extravagant thing. Uh, I saw Godzilla, X Kong the other day and woof. Um, <laughs> woof. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I feel like uh, even The Walking Dead got very monologue y. It's hmm. like, all right, people don't talk like that. It's exactly what I said when I watched Bottoms for the first time. I was like, it talks like this. <laughs> but they do, though. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Well, okay. Bottoms is a very heightened universe. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, I finish it. I think he turned it off. You said no. It was, it was a chore to make it. I think we made it thirty minutes, and that Damn. Was, that was pushing it. I was like, I'm done. I can't. <laughs> that movie is I, hilarious. I tap out. <laughs> it might be my love for Rachel Sennett, but that movie is. I think I gave it a, like a four and a half out of five. You gave it a high rating. <laughs> it was so I went to go into the city to see that. I took off for that movie. Well, and it hey, was well worth it. Okay. Um, as far as the Blair Witch goes, we've talked about that. You can go back to the last episode where we go fully in depth on it. Yeah. But I watched it again a few nights ago. Still holds up, I think. Yeah, I promise <laughs> I'll rewatch that soon, maybe. All right, what do you got, Doug? All right, this is coming from the homie. Robert the 17th. What's Shout up, Daddy O? Uh, train to Busan. He lists as, let's go back here, underrated. Underrated? Hmm. Have you seen it? Uh, I never actually finished that movie because I ironically uh, watched it, or coincidentally, watched Related it on a train. train. Oh. No, I watched it on the Amtrak. Oh, okay. Me and, me and, uh, my friend Joe, we were going to play a show in Pennsylvania, in uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, home of uh, you know Ryan Dunn and Bam Margera, all those Ming hags over there. Uh, didn't know I was going to break into a, a was, Bam Margera accent. <laughs> that was pretty spot on. <laughs> you know those muffs Ming hagging over there. Uh, you know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> we were we were on the we were on the Amtrak and we were watching Train to Busan. And the Wi-Fi was very spotty, so we didn't get a chance to finish it. But I remember that it was absolutely insane from the the 45 minutes I saw. Yeah, it's really good. Um, 
I don't know how how big that movie is if it's actually underrated. Well, it's getting a. I think it's been in talks for a while. Uh, it's supposed to be getting an American remake, which I hope just doesn't happen. But you know what? I will say underrated because it really is a very good movie. Like zombie stuff aside, it's just a great movie, and I feel like it should have got more attention in America. Won a shit ton of awards, but. Because of the subject matter, I'm sure they were like, oh, we can't recognize this. Exactly. It wasn't, it, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't about an oil worker in the 1930s, darling. <laughs> Where's my caviar? <laughs> yeah. Get me my raw snails. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, Train to Busan is kind of like the Godzilla minus one of you know Korean horror movies because hey all right right zombie movies have been done to death in america and then this korea this little korean movie comes out train to busan and people are like oh this shit is real like yeah. kind of revitalized the uh again zombie movies are another thing that's just been beaten to death kind of hard to do something new with that subgenre but train to busan i mean there's something about it yeah that people gravitate towards uh so i would I would definitely go underrated, leaning more towards properly rated because everyone who talks about it loves it. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for the answer, Robert. Okay. Our boy seed underscore Murda says somewhat recent overrated. The witch. What is, what is with you people? Huh? Do you not appreciate good cinema? People don't like those slow burns. Hey, burn me up, baby. I want all. I'll light the match. <laughs> Let's burn it down. <laughs> nice. Had to, had to reference our boy Rohan. Just burn it all to the ground. I'll light the match. Oh, shit. All right. So you said overrated the witch. We did talk about that one. Underrated. No one will save you. Do you know why you're forgetting that movie? No one was. Oh, the alien movie? Yeah, that yeah. pile of trash that came out yeah. with Caitlin Deaver. I hated that movie. I love you, buddy, but gonna have to disagree. I don't know. I didn't flat out hate No One Will Save You. Caitlin Deaver was a bum in that movie. <laughs> Listen, the concept of like no one talking is is fine, but but a quiet place did that and knocked it out of the park. This one was just there was no character development with this one, and the aliens were just dumb. Like they could have kicked, uh, you know, they could have murdered that chick so many times. Uh, it wasn't the jump scares weren't really anything inventive. Uh, nothing was fleshed out. It was boring 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 i will say the last 20 minutes or so it just kept going and i was like guys wrap it up what are we doing then it goes into like the dream sequence and yeah the aliens leave her alone because she accidentally <sighs> murdered her friend that's right cool i mean yeah. the, I, I like the premise of it i love a good alien movie i feel like we're kind of overdue for an for just an understated alien movie. All right. Well, thanks for the reply, Seed Murda. Even though we kind of disagreed with you on that one, but I'm telling yeah, you, I wouldn't even give witch. that movie a rating. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you're really salty about these. You know, people are really not feeling your movie taste. Hey, some people <laughs> don't want to live deliciously, and it shows. <laughs> You get a you should get a t-shirt made of that. Oh my god, that's a good <laughs> idea. I could sell that on the Facebook. Yeah, Facebook Marketplace, all the Facebook mom groups. <laughs> Have a little three year old wear. Okay, anyway. Uh that Black Phillips a cut up. <laughs> <laughs> Such a great thing. Such a great thing to be in the world. <laughs> uh all right, the next uh next what? underrated, overrated movie we got here is from Joe F. And Perry. What's up, dude? Um, hey, he's going with Frozen, directed by Adam Green, not the uh, the Disney right. movie. As uh, underrated? Underrated. I will agree with that. I like that movie. It's a Frozen solid kind of movie. Wow. Never hey. do that again. <laughs> yeah, I know. 
<laughs> I'm still thinking about minion. You should, mom. you should let it go, please. Just let it go. Oh, <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> you got me. That was a knee slapper. Um, I don't like heights or anything like that. And I've been snowboarding since I was like, 11 or 12 so i've been up on a ski lift and it's pretty terrifying when it just stops out of nowhere but i yeah i didn't feel anything for this movie i don't really remember it that much so i will call it underrated but i remember not liking it um, so I, for those that don't that aren't familiar with the movie three friends go on this ski trip they take a lift up the park is about to close but they like kind of coax this guy and like hey let's go up one last time Long story short, they ended up getting stuck on the ski lift. All the lights shut out. Everybody goes home, and they're left up there overnight. And that's the movie. <laughs> yeah. I think it's good. Um, it's a I just solid, remember- low-budget movie. Uh, Adam Green, director of Hatchet. And, I, and Hatchet was great. Kane Hodder plays the snowplow driver. In Frozen? Mm-hmm. Wow, I really need to watch this movie again. I think it's good. Um, yeah, I need I need to watch it again. I really don't remember it. I remember what happens in the end. I don't want to say it for people who haven't seen it. Yeah. I wasn't a fan of that. I just didn't see. I was like, this is kind of. I mean, I'm not saying it's not a great. 10 out of 10. Blow your socks off kind of movie, but yeah. it's good. I was just waiting for something else. Like, I didn't like that. That what happened was the end result. <clears throat> I just felt cheated. Well, I think that's a that's a good pick, Joe. Appreciate the yeah. appreciate the response. Okay, I guess it's my turn. If I can, that get it my, is. I swear to God, Face ID drives me nuts sometimes. <laughs> I've been doing the same thing too. I've been like looking down, up, and down. Yeah. All right. This we got a. I can't talk. Hey. Um, <laughs> we got a question from Cherry Haycraft. Hey, she wants to know is Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 overrated or underrated? That's that was one question. of the movies that I had on my list that I wrote down for us to talk about. So, good solid question, conversation. Cherry. Controversial. Um, what do you say? This is tough. It is. I feel right. Like, I feel like it's gotten such a... It kind of has that Season of the Witch flavor to it. A little like bit. It, it's gotten its resurgence over the last couple of years, and people are really into just how goofy it was, and it kind of like expands the Texas Chainsaw Massacre like lore, and Leatherface is just a big old dumb idiot in it. Caroline Williams is great. Uh, the underground tunnel is so like 80s. It's yeah. very Goonies like. Um, I don't know. What, what would you say? I don't want to say overrated. I really don't. But like, well, let me scratch my hmm. skull with a clothes hanger while I think about <laughs> it. <clears throat> I I'm gonna go properly rated. It's and just so weird, and that's not a cop out. I feel like for all the reasons that you just said. <clears throat> it does get a lot of praise. I see a lot of chop top merchandise and cosplays. I don't think it's overrated. I don't know. I, I do see how some people could say that it's overrated, but because it is sort of a, I wouldn't say it's an easy watch. It's very noisy and lots of just strange characters. It, it's just so batshit crazy. I see how some people could be kind of annoyed with it. Yeah, I I, I totally agree with you. And I'm not one of those people, but yeah, same. It's it's an extremely fun movie. I mean, just the sheer fact that you could have the same person do one of the most terrifying horror movies of all time in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre and go to the sequel and do what he did. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Um, and it's just a completely different tone um but just hearing about it a lot kind of like how you know season of the witch again you really can't have that same argument because leatherface is in texas chainsaw 2 whereas michael myers isn't in three uh Mm -hmm. it's just a whole different energy 
Yeah, but completely it, different. It's just a great B movie. Wow, I had to verify that Toby Hooper did direct that. That's, huh? To make that big of a tonal shift from the same director, that's kind of takes some guts. Very bold move. I don't know how he sold that to the studio. <laughs> yeah, it's a cult classic nowadays. Um, I I I will say properly rated too. It because it reached that status. I don't think it was. Uh, you know, if I think it was underrated at a time because people kind of right. probably just wrote it off. Um, but you know, people in the you know horror community and the horror space rallied around it, like Season of the Witch, and you know, discovered it's a really fun, great, entertaining, schlocky movie. Fully agree with that. And Bill Mosley, 10 out of 10 performance, easily, and Caroline Williams. One of the best final yeah. girls in horror cinematic history. Pretty sure I still Branch. have the VHS. Maybe I should get them to sign that at Fear Fest. Oh, we should. Oh, we should both do it, baby. Oh, you still haven't sold. Got it, it Daddy. No, this one. Uh, yeah, that one's staying. I had a screener copy of that VHS, oh. and I think I like traded it for something. I kind of regret doing so. It's easy to find, though. You can definitely pick it up again. Not the screener copies. Oh, oh yeah, right. The screener copy. Um, yeah. yeah, what's the... I mean, I've had the screener copy of the Ice Cream Man, and it, it was kind of annoying. Yeah, some people... I mean, they are uh, more rare to have a screener copy, but if you are if you just want the movie just to watch it, sometimes it does get annoying, saying, like, hey, property of canon video or whatever yeah like right on the screen but yeah. if you want it for like the rarity of it then it's still it's a it's a good movie to have <laughs> all right hiccups uh what's your next question <laughs> That's acid reflux baby um all right i got one last one from the uh from the instagram questionnaire all right uh from i blame the movies what's up my dude oh, yeah. uh, he says uh the rage carry two uh, is an underrated gem. Huh. Now, I just watched the first Carrie for the first time the other night, so I haven't seen Carrie 2. I saw it back... I, actually, I saw that in theaters. My stepmom took in me to theaters? see theaters? Yeah. In like 99, I believe. Oh my god. Yeah. Um... Brad from Home Alone plays like one of the bully high school kids. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. Zachary really Ty Brian. Casting. That's his name? Yeah. Would have never guessed that. <laughs> you didn't grow up watching Home Improvement? I thought he said Home Alone. No, Home Improvement. Oh, no, I hate Tim Allen. Yeah, he is <laughs> pretty annoying to watch these days, but I did like Home <laughs> Improvement. I told you I watched Santa Claus over Christmas break. Oh, I love Santa Claus. Over fucking rated. Overrated? Oh my god, yes. That, that movie's is... so good. No, it's not. Go back David to David Crumholtz as the elf? Come on. Tim Allen's just an asshole. Yeah, but like the atmosphere of that movie's so good. Are you I... saying Arnold's not an asshole and jingle all the way? He kind of is. Hey, don't talk about Arnold, you son of a bitch. Okay? <laughs> he can do whatever he wants. Hey, jingle all the way is one of my favorite Christmas movies, so I'm not... Do those not Allstate that. commercials, Arnold. Do whatever you want. Like a good neighbor. I wonder how much they had to pay him to do that shit. Not enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Too much of a legend to be stuck calling random people about their home insurance. Yeah, car fuck, insurance, whatever. Fuck the Santa Claus. Fuck <laughs> Tim sure. Allen. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I have a shirt. I found it at a thrift store like a year ago. It's just with a, white, mug shot? a white shirt with Tim Allen's mugshot. <laughs> Way to ruin it, Doug. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to. I was like, well, I'm definitely buying this. We can cut that out and do a, do a second take. It's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, he got arrested for trafficking cocaine in Michigan. And Pamela Anderson's... Uh, book i think it was pamela anderson that he like exposed himself to her like on the set Ooh. of home improvement like here's my home improved dick here's this wood look at all this lumber really weird 
Well, further ads to uh, Santa Claus sucking ass. All right, what were we talking about? The Rage, uh, Gary <laughs> Sue. I'd have to go back and rewatch it, but yeah, I would say that's um, as far as late '90s teen horror movies. I feel like that doesn't get discussed enough. So sure, I'll say underrated. I hear that it's so bad that it's good. I don't know. I haven't watched it <clears throat> in a very long time. I can't imagine that it has anything to do with the first Carrie. I mean, I know Carrie is like kind of goth in this one. And if I remember correctly, when she starts to like burn down the gym, these little tattoos appear all, all over her body, almost like tribal Ivy looking. Yeah. She listened to some Limp Biscuit in her off time. It was 99 after all. It's probably got a banging soundtrack. No, I think honestly, that. we need to do another new metal episode and look into that. I was literally thinking <laughs> about that today. I was like, man, we haven't talked about new metal in a hot minute. Uh, Rage Carry 2, March 23rd, 1999. 1999. Soundtrack, unfortunately, not new metal. I feel like that's what that would have helped it. Probably, yeah. In 1999, when everyone was like wearing trip pants and Chain wallets and Jinko jeans. People would have been all over that. Put some Static X or Power Man 5000 on that soundtrack. You got yourself a banger. We used to be a proper country. Make America new metal again. <sighs> Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Last one here. Comes from Hallelujah Dystopia. What's up, dude? What's up? Funny enough, he says underrated carry too. Hey, okay. So I just discussed that. Yeah. Now I feel like we should shift to carry the original then. Okay. But real quick. Discuss carry too. Sure. Let's go ahead. So you watched carry for the first time recently for the first time last week. It was one of those ones that just escaped me. Uh, for some reason i never watched it. It always passed me by. Don't know why. Um, I see why everyone loves that movie. Uh, and I've been on a Brian De Palma kick a jump scare at the end where she, her hand comes out of the grave. It got me and I knew it was coming. Oh yeah. I knew it was coming. Somehow it still got me, but the, the got lighting it. in that movie, Sissy Spacek is absolutely like magnetic in that movie. And people are, and also John Travolta's in it. Pretty insane. Uh, solid cast. Brian De Palma was very slap happy in that movie. I feel like every character was slapping the shit out of each other. <laughs> um, the gym teacher was slapping the kids. The kids were slapping the parents. I don't remember that part. I slap, slap, slap you. <laughs> I slap and you slap and you silly because you disrespected me. <laughs> Dude, everyone was getting smacked. Like straight up open hand. What do five fingers say to the face? Smack. Dave Chappelle style. I'm going to wow. smack you in the face. Look, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard of Grease Lightning? Hey, Gary, you can't just burn down the gymnasium. <laughs> <laughs> we got to listen to Power Man 5000. Oh, wait, <laughs> wrong movie. <laughs> Hey, Carrie, have you seen my cheat codes? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> T-Birds, T-Birds. <laughs> C-Birds for Carrie, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, she's got the rage over here. That's the Christopher Walken. That's not even John Travolta anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I did really love Carrie. The Italian uh, version of Carrie. They just dumped marinara sauce on <laughs> <laughs> Yo! <laughs> it could be called like Mary, short for Mary Nara. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> M-A-R-R-I-E. <laughs> Yeah, take some of that wise guy. <laughs> a whole bucket of marinara? That's heaven right there. <laughs> hey, look, your mother's sauce is going to drop. Hey, that's no the sauce pouring down on her. <laughs> that's liquid gold. And the pasta king and queen go to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, Is it one of your, um, do you think it's overrated or underrated? Carrie? Yeah, well, I would I would say properly rated. Uh, I would say more towards... yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'd say proper. I mean, for 1976, it's for what it does. You there's an argument it's underrated, but I yeah. would say 
proper. I feel, I feel like, like it does. I mean, that's a very popular movie with, you know, go up to whoever on the street. Hey, have you ever seen Carrie? Yeah, I love that movie. Everybody knows Carrie. Yeah. And also helps that it was directed by such like a big director at the time. And he's still one of the, I would say, most famed director at, you know, to, in today's universe. I mean, he, Brian De Palma directed Scarface and Carlito's Way. And to have him do his like take of that story by Stephen King, uh, really perfect marriage. And Piper Laurie, who plays Carrie's mom, does not get enough credit. I think she is, I mean, if I had to think of like really iconic horror villains, who that bitch is terrifying. That, yeah, that's a good point. That role is underrated, super underrated. And just the way, like when she comes home after like, um, after like burning everything down and using her powers and, uh, she comes up the stairs and Piper Laurie is just like standing behind the stairs. It's just very creepy. And like, again, Brian De Palma, uh, he's really inspired. You can tell by like Giallo movies and stuff like that. And like the angles he uses with the camera just feels like a very Italian yep. style of filmmaking. So we could go, you know, marinara sauce dumping on the dumping on Mary. Now we're talking. <laughs> Give me a nice bucket of olive oil to slip on. <laughs> oh, also. Yeah. Um, fuck. What's her name? Who was also in it? Uh, she was in Halloween, the original. PJ Souls. There you go. PJ Souls. That's right. I was going to say uh, Linnea Quigley, but wrong blonde person. Yeah. PJ Souls, fucking legend. Absolutely, um, baby. All right. And his last one here, overrated. The Exorcist. You'll get no pushback from me on that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't. I can't, can't say what? it's overrated. It's properly rated. There's a reason why no. The Exorcist is still touted as one of the best horror films of all time. No, say, say the thing. Say what people really say about it. About it's the, the scariest movie of all time, dude. Hands down, scariest <laughs> fucking movie. Swear to God. Listen, I can't debate that because that movie scared the shit out of me too. And if you watch it today, it still holds up. <laughs> what part? Yeah, seriously, what, what you, part? Just the tone of it and like her thrashing around in the bed. And the priests like being covered by like slime. It's pretty, it's pretty disturbing. I guess. I mean, I. Yeah, I mean, fifty years ago, if you're a very religious person and you see that, yeah, that's scary. Just say you hate possession movies. I don't hate possession movies, but as far as just The Exorcist goes. I have to say overrated. But for a reason though. It's 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 in the zeitgeist as high as it is for a reason. Yeah, but look, it's like I said, it's the scariest movie for its time. In 1973, yeah. There was I think the it's still scary scariest today. movie and Somewhere along the way, everybody just kept saying it's the scariest movie of all time. And that's people just started to believe that. And they kept hearing it through the 80s and 90s and 2000s. Just like religion. Hey, there you go. So now people are like, oh, I guess it is the scariest movie of all time. No, it's one of the scariest movies of all time. I don't sure. think it is. It deserves to be mentioned. Movie. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, uh if there was like a definitive top 10 list of movies that if, if someone comes to you and asks you to make a list, that is the 10 scariest movies that might be on there. If I'm writing the list, no, not me. Damn. Sorry. <laughs> I just don't see it. Exorcism of Emily Rose though. Very underrated. Would you say that movie is scarier than the exorcist in your eyes? I mean, just, just that scene where her roommate wakes up and she's like laying on the floor all contorted 
That's scarier than anything in the exorcist to me. Oh, Philly's with the maggots now. Uh, I'll talk (laughs) about that. (laughs) Evil dead rise overrated. Holy shit. (laughs) I don't even care to mention that on any list. All right, Doug, you got any more? I do have a couple more. This one I'm excited to talk about uh, because I think it is super overrated. And I know we've touched on it a couple of times before. Uh, Scanners. I've never seen Scanners. I know it's Cronenberg classic. I know the head explosion. I have heard many times that it's overrated. Um, No. Essentially, the head explosion is the best part of it. Dude, when... That when I tell you, it's fitting that we're talking about scanners right after we talk about the exorcist. Because when I watched that movie, my fucking head was spinning, I couldn't understand (laughs) the damn thing going on. I was so utterly confused. And obviously, David Cronenberg's movies are complex by nature. Uh, there is just too much science talk that doesn't make a lot of sense in my brain, and I didn't see the hype about it. So I got real tired of it and I finished it and I was like, yeah, I just don't, I just don't understand it. Uh, I don't see what people see in it. I think the brood is a much better movie. I than would say Sanders. that. Yeah. Video drone. Again, he doesn't make easy to watch movies, but video drone, I think is more entertaining than scanners. It's a, just, it's a lot of fast talking science jargon. Hmm. And I'm like, what is everyone talking about? <clears throat> That's just me. Yeah, I got to go back and uh, rewatch The Brood. I mean, The Edge and Gangrel. It's, it's good shit. Did I tell you good when shit. I was in ninth grade, I I <laughs> I rapped over that that beat their theme song. <laughs> bam, bam, shh, bam, bam, bam. It is a good theme song. It's one of the best, easily. <laughs> The intro, like with the reverse, like whatever that is. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god! Um, All right, what was uh, what's your other one besides scanners? Oh, um, I don't think we mentioned this. I mean, I have I have a bunch. Do you want to go? Since I went, I lost my list. You can't just think of one. Look at my tapes over here. All right. All right. We're going to go with the Wolf of Snow Hollow. Because uh, underrated. So underrated. The great werewolf movie. Dude, I it, honestly, I've watched it so many times. I think it might be like one of my favorite horror movies. It's so good. And I only so saw it unique. once. But oh, yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, you got to watch it again. It is so good. And it's just like it, great atmosphere and Jim Cummings. It's such a ridiculous movie. Like he, it's like he's acting like no one else is acting in this movie. He's such like a buffoon. And uh, the twist is actually really, really good. I thought um, it's just a like you said, a solid werewolf movie. I think it doesn't get spoken about enough. Yeah, totally agree. Um, been meaning to rewatch that one because I absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, it was, it was a really, that's a really fun movie. They have enough, uh, you know, werewolf moments to keep you engaged. I mean, and then when you find out what's actually happening, it's really awesome. There's no shortage of blood. There's a little bit of carnage. I'm I'm going with underrated for that one. (laughs) All right. Yeah. Underrated. Okay. I got one for you. All right. Hit it, daddy. We've never really talked about any of the Friday, the 13th movies on this apparent new series. We're going to start doing. (laughs) <laughs> underrated under overrated uh didn't uh, we talk about the first friday the 13th or did we not i don't think we did i mean i i'll go ahead and say um maybe overrated just as a movie it's not i agree it's far from the best friday the 13th the ending is great yeah uh it's a good setup for what's to come uh i think a lot of the more the more memorable scenes are in every other movie but the original yeah but i was thinking part six overrated or underrated what's the tagline for what's the jason lives there oh underrated i don't know man i 
are we talking about amongst us horror fans friday the 13th series fans because if we are i would say overrated yeah you think so and look i kind of recently turned a corner on this movie maybe not for the better like for my entire life it was my favorite number one part six all the time the alamo had a showing of it sometime last year and um you know how when you see a movie in theaters that you've seen a thousand times, you're almost like watching it again for the first yeah, time? Yeah, absolutely. You're watching it with the audience. You're not alone in your room or your living room or whatever. Yeah, I noticed just how fucking silly it is. Like, I've always known that it's a very, it, it's like a mixture. I always thought it was a 50-50 mix of serious Jason with this campy meta atmosphere. But rewatching it that time, I was like, it's more like 70% wacky, 30% serious. And some of the things in it were, it's like, come on, this is, this is getting fucking ridiculous. <laughs> well, when you're in the sixth movie of a franchise, like the paintball gotta, scene, the what? There's like the, the scene with the paintball. Oh yeah. Like yeah, in yeah. The woods. I was like, all of this is, they're playing like the, the wacky clown music. It's there's, there's some goofy stuff in it, but I, I don't think it is. I mean, I still love it, but after that last watch, I was like, man, this might've dropped down a couple notches. Yeah. You don't remember it being that good. And you know what? I feel bad sometimes when I like really enjoy a movie and I've seen it a bunch and then I go back and watch it. And then something just clicks in my brain that I'm like, it's kind of lost its luster for me. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what like I feel guilty, like almost not liking it the same way as I did when I first watched it or second or third time or whatever. But yeah, I think Jason lives still gets the underrated nod for me. Uh, Just because it's. I feel like, yeah, I feel like not a lot of people pick that as their favorite. I don't know. I do see it pretty common, like in the top top three at least a lot of people pick it as number one and that was me for many years <laughs> you gotta so, change your friday the 13th ranking yeah maybe a little bit i know final chapter everyone or a lot of people have as number one the number ones i see going around are part six uh no not oh. i don't really see that a lot honestly uh part final. three i feel like a lot of people put as their number one um Final chapter. That's what I said. Yeah. Uh, final chapter. It's usually flip flops between those two. I guess if somebody that had never seen a Jason movie came to me and said, Hey, pick one that kind of sums it all up. I would go to part four. Cause part six is like a parody of the series. I'll give you that. You know? Yeah. But part yeah. four is like, Hey, here's the essence teenagers you got crispin glover it's it kind of has it all it's got good makeup effects by savini so i i will agree with you in saying that part six it that's where like the atmosphere kind of changes you know they, they try to inject some uh like some different stuff into the franchise do like <laughs> let's do like two more two more okay i'm excited to talk about yeah, let's go with this one. Uh, Cube. Never seen it. Dude, it is so underrated. So underrated. I I hear about it. I know the, the VHS cover. Yeah, with the cube. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very solid marketing. But yeah, it's just one of those movies that kind of gets swept under the rug because it's not like a horror, horror movie. It's kind of like the early beginnings of saw of like, you know, trap horror. Right. Uh, and it's an interesting premise. Uh, they're trapped in this cube and they need to solve how to get out of it. And it's very interesting. Uh, pretty solid kills uh, to be trapped in. A, it's very like um, inventive, you know, it's very different. So it's like an escape room. Sort of. You ever done an escape room? No, and I want to. 
I did I one. Feel like for, it would take me hours. <laughs> I did one for the first time over Christmas. It's, oh yeah. Um, maybe it was the one that we did, but it was it was stressful. Like that's usually how they are, from what it seems like. Yeah. People have to, uh, you know, you have to work together with people, which could be frustrating. Yeah, it really like brought some feelings to the surface because <laughs> I was like, you know, it, nothing for me, but like some people were kind of butting heads a little bit. <laughs> like, well, why don't you get out of the way and let me do it? It's like, oh, what's that? <laughs> you're the one who's always drinking. You can't remember shit. It's like, whoa, <laughs> all right, this is not an intervention. This is we're just trying to get the fuck out of this room here. But yeah, I think Cube should be your watch tonight. All right, what else you got, Doug? All right, if we're going to do one last one, uh, I think this movie is severely, severely underrated. Severely. Severely. Okay. Going to go with that adjective today. Uh, and that is Oculus. Directed by Mike Flanagan, starring Karen Gillan. I was hoping you were going to pick something I've seen. Um, <laughs> I can keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Oculus. Have I seen that? I don't... It's the one with so. like the killer mirror, pretty much. I mean, oh no, nah, I never did. That's that's one that actually, and and I will disclose this information because I am all about being open and honest. Uh, I did cry during that movie. That ma- that one made me emotional for some reason. Yeah, and it was actually terrifying. Uh, it's kind of a one location setting type of movie, uh, mm-hmm. and Mike Flanagan makes it interesting. Uh, it's kind of like a mind fuck. Uh, it's a very, very uh, well written movie on the smaller scale that kind of makes you feel claustrophobic in a way. All right, Mike Flanagan's the goat. He's good. <laughs> He's also hit or miss. <laughs> He's kind of a bitch. <laughs> I'll, I'll say greatest of all time. Cool your jets. <laughs> you didn't watch Honey of Hill House though, right? No. Yeah, that it, get invested with that. I mean, I love. Midnight Mass and uh, Hush. I would say that's underrated. Yeah, Hush was okay. Yeah, definitely a fun movie. I don't think I finished it though. It's a good home invasion. I guess you could call it a slasher, right? And again, a solid premise that's different. She's deaf. Not like no one can save you where (laughs) no one talks and it's annoying as shit. All right, Doug, one more. All right, what do we got? What do we got? Let's do. You want to do a? I'll, I'll let you pick. Do you want to do a recent one? I'll whittle it down from there. Sure. Okay. Thanksgiving. Underrated or overrated? <clears throat> Certainly not underrated. I'll go properly rated. I'm going straight up overrated. Hmm. I am done pretending this movie is remotely good oh shit <laughs> which i never <laughs> pretended anyway have you have you watched it since no but i just did a lot of thinking about it and i was like i came away from that movie just not enjoying like i i was like thinking back to it as soon as i left the theater after like you know you come off the high of seeing a new movie i was like sure. yeah, that's fun nothing crazy but it was fun and then the more i thought about it i'm like you know what i really didn't enjoy that movie it, the dialogue was horrible. Well, that's Eli Roth for you. It was like, I'll tell you a movie that's not even <laughs> on the fucking scale of <laughs> <laughs> that knock knock movie was woo. <laughs> yeah. Starring Keanu Reeves. That one I, was rough. I believe I begged you to watch that. I was like, dude, whatever you're doing, watch this piece of shit. I watched it while Brittany <laughs> was at work and she was like, What are you doing? And I was like, I am watching this garbage movie. And then she watched the last 15 minutes of it with me. And she was like, not impressed. And I was like, I'm so glad you didn't sit with me for the last 45 minutes. Eli Roth cannot write dialogue for shit. It's the Rob zombie syndrome. Have you noticed in every one of his movies, there's always a, a character says retarded or gay in every movie. There's always like, dude, that's so gay. Or, oh my god, you're so retarded. Well, I feel like Eli Eli Roth, Roth, (laughs) put down the fucking crayon and learn how to write dialogue like an adult. Yeah, you don't need it. Just just the one monologue that Keanu Reeves has. It was free pizza! You suck my dick! You fucked my brains! It's like... 
two writers wrote this movie, Eli Roth and someone else. What was I supposed to do? You sucked my cock. You both fucking sucked my cock. It was free pizza. Free fucking pizza. Wow, that is really, really rough. Uh, yeah. You might need to take. That's someone who is stuck in remedial remedial reading class. Um, yeah, <laughs> he doesn't really go in depth with anything. It's kind of just on the surface writing. Uh, but yeah, Thanksgiving. I mean, the the villain was cool. I liked the John Carver stuff. Uh, but again, everything was kind of just derivative of his other work and just other stuff that we've seen before. And it's just the, the dialogue is what took, like, it's just so, I was hoping everyone dies. Every single person. I couldn't, like, hang on to someone. Like, in Immaculate, I want Sydney Sweeney to win. I'm invested. In Barbarian, I want that chick to win. I want her to you know, have her come up and so I want Justin Long to straight up eat shit. <laughs> Thanksgiving, yeah. I was like, everyone sucks. I hope <laughs> everyone dies. And that's it. I again, yeah. but the, the villain itself is cool. And I like the premise, but just I wish Eli Roth wasn't the one to do it. <laughs> yeah, and that opening sequence, when you really think about it, it's pretty fucking dumb. A whole Black Friday over a waffle iron. Like maybe if it was made in like 2011, where even, like people actually lined up for Black Friday, you'd have to go ten years before that. <laughs> you'd have to go back to like 1997 or something. For that <laughs> like jingle sense. all the way. Now that is when you use that premise. Everyone's yeah. going after the one toy. Yeah, you're telling me in 2024 people are getting trampled over a waffle iron. No, they wait till Cyber Monday and they order it, and they get two day delivery. Bam, right to their house. Yeah. I see what you mean. Kind of overrated. Are we going with one more? <laughs> well, since you mentioned it, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I want to, and I got to get to boxing class. Oh shit. Okay. Like All right. 30 minutes to get down. There. I, I won't get, do this doozy though. Okay. Gym bag. St. Maud. Since we both saw love lies bleeding. Uh, only saw it once was just saying, I want to rewatch it. I don't know. Kind of underrated in the grand scheme, I think. Yeah, underrated for sure. There's one jump scare in that movie. There's not a lot of jump scares in that movie, but the one that happens literally made me jump Van Halen style. I don't even remember like details of that movie, but I did like it. Yeah, underrated Saint Maud. All right. I think uh, we'll wrap it up at that point. Let's put a condom on it, baby. Yikes. <laughs> you bet yes. Look. Yeah, what are we talking about? We don't use condoms. We practice safe podcasting around. <laughs> uh, baby, I like it raw. <laughs> That's old dirty bastard for you youngins out there. Well, thank you so much for <laughs> tuning in <laughs> to part two of Overrated <laughs> Underrated. <laughs> I hope you... um picked up some gems. I know I have. There's a lot of things I want to check out now. I'm going I'm yeah. to watch uh Layer of the White Worm tonight. Yeah, let me know how how much uh, you get through of that. All right. I was going to watch, you know what? I watched The Watcher the other night, so you can't say that I don't want your recommendations. It's true. And I was you. I was really into it. Really loved it. Um I, I had an idea of what I was going to watch tonight, but I forgot. So I think I'm just going to, I might watch the Wolf of Snow Hollow again. Nothing wrong with that. There's I, always a struggle. Like, Hey, should I watch this great recommendation I heard or just do a comfort watch and watch something I've seen a thousand times. So I had that. I mean, that's the constant problem of uh, us movie watchers. Okay, well, we are going to go ahead and get on out of here, but thank you so much for the questions. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. We love the shit out of you. Doug, I love you, my friend. I love you, Daddy-O, and I love all of you. Uncle Tony loves <laughs> all of you. Just Father Sky, Mother Earth, and your dear old Uncle Tony. <laughs> <laughs> You'll all be doing this by Labor Day. <laughs> all right, bye, everybody. Catch you on the next one. My name is Lars. <laughs> <laughs>